For today's special episode of Transform My Dance Studio, we are revisiting one of our most popular training series for dance studio owners. Of course, I'm talking about Dance Teachers Unite. Now, if you haven't heard of Dance Teachers Unite, don't worry. Over the coming weeks, I am going to be sharing with you the very best bits and golden ticket ideas from the 10-day online summit. During Dance Teachers Unite, Clint was joined by over 30 industry experts who share their greatest tips for dance studio owners on every aspect of your business. From mindset to finance, from digital marketing to administration overhaul, we have got you covered. Hey everyone, it's Clint Salter, your host for Dance Teachers Unite for 2015. And today is the day that I know so many of you have been waiting for because we are talking about social media. That thing that sometimes you sit at your computer and you sit there for half an hour because you don't know what to post and you're like, what do I do? And everyone was saying to me, Clint, I want to learn more about Pinterest because I know our mums are there. We know it's a very uh, female-dominated social media platform. We know these mums are buying on Pinterest as well. So what can we be doing on Pinterest for our dance studio? You know, aren't mums just kind of putting what new lounge they want, maybe putting that new husband that they want? Aren't they making those boards? Well, no, they're not just doing that. And I've got an expert who is going to help us today get through all the clutter when it comes to Pinterest. Please welcome our guest, the lovely beautiful Anna Bennett. Hey, Anna. Hello, Clint. Hello, Australia. Hello around the world we are, Anna, with this Yes, that's right. This is global after all. Certainly. So many uh, of our studio owners are in the US and Canada and UK. We've had some now from Malaysia and Italy and New Zealand and, and definitely my home city and town of Sydney, Australia. So, Anna, for our audience that might not know much about you. Maybe they're like, who is this Anna Bennett? Can you give us a little bit of information about who you are, what you do, and what is your big mission in the world? All right. Great question. Okay. So I am the founder of White Glove Social Media Marketing. And what we do here, Clint, is we help businesses grow their traffic, as in website traffic, We all want that more eyeballs on our traffic. I mean, on our website, right? Uh, We assist them with sales, brand profile, profits, market share. And and we do this in about four different ways, okay? So we do coaching, whether it's a group coaching or one-on-one coaching, um, strategic account reviews where we actually look at your Pinterest account, what you're doing there, what are you doing with your other other social media platforms? Like we take the whole picture and mm-hmm. basically give you a one-stop shopping solution. And then we do monthly account management and we sell courses um, online to teach people how to use Pinterest effectively. Um, but you know what? No matter you know what your situation is, um, the bottom line is whether you're a newbie or you're an advanced user, I can help you in so many different ways to to really, um, you know, excel, uh, you know, on Pinterest. Mm. And my mission is all about helpfulness, you know, help my husband. (laughs) 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 Boy, he needs help. Help my family, help my friends, help, you know, my customers, and and ultimately the audience today. I'm really hoping that, that I can really help thousands of, you know, dance owners, um, with, with, with this, um, you know, short segment of your summit. Yeah. Awesome. So, so happy to have you here and thanks for, thanks for sharing a bit about you and, and what you're up to. I think, Anna, you know, Pinterest is one of those platforms that isn't at the forefront of our dance studio's minds because they're all on Facebook. So we've got Facebook sorted. A lot of them are on Instagram. We've got Instagram sorted. We're here to talk about Pinterest you know, give us kind of why should we be on Pinterest as a dance studio owner and what can it provide us that maybe the other platforms can't? Okay, um, again, great question. You know, social media, Clint, can really be overwhelming, right? Totally, totally. Okay, why do I need to do this? As a business owner, a dance studio owner, okay, you know, listen, I've got to do accounting. I've got to, you know, get around these students and, and enroll them and put up whatever advertising you got to do, whether it's print or, or, or whatever. So, you know, social media in general is really quite overwhelming. So 
Um, I first started out as a social media strategist. So I understand how all the other platforms work. But, you know, um, in about a short few months, I really gravitated towards Pinterest because what I really want your audience to understand is that visual content marketing is what's, is what's going to rule social media. Mm. You know, we live in a very fast paced world and we're, le- we're reading less and we're just scanning, right? We're just scanning through images. And that's because our brain processes images 60,000 times faster than text. Mm. Okay. So here's the beautiful thing about, you know, um, you know, Pinterest. First of all, it is a digital pin board. You know, it's, it's a website where any person can create a Pinterest page for free, you know, to collect ideas of, of things that they like, that they want to buy, you know, to try out, whatever that is, whatever your goal is. So from a user experience, that's how it works. But from a business perspective is that you can create a Pinterest page for free to put your products and services um, that you wish to sell on display. So it's like an extension of your website. And and it's all visual because it's all images. So um, the the founder, Ben Silverman, um, he actually created Pinterest because he wanted to help people discover the things that they like, that they love, and, and then he shows them where to buy them. So, you know, Pinterest is like this big wish list, you know, people are pinning the things that they're like, okay, I, I, I want to, you know, maybe check out this dance studio and, and what they're about. Oh, wow. You know, there's, here's a cool Pinterest account of a dance studio. And they've got um, a bunch of boards there that they've curated about, you know, um, who their employees are, you know, um, their facility, events that they've attended, um, you know, all sorts of different things. So it's really a great um, tool for discovering ideas and saving them for later. And, you know, Pinterest is really not a social media network. Okay. It is not a social media network. People don't go there to, you know, share conversations with their friends like they do on Facebook Mm -hmm. or share breaking news like, like, you know, like you do on, on Twitter. So it's really this amazing search engine like Google built right inside. Mm, yeah. I love it. I think, I think that's great. And you touched on a couple of um, interesting things there around giving studio owners some ideas because so many times it's like, well, what do I, like, what do I post? You know, like what images should I post? How should I create boards? You know, yeah. should I have a board where it's like my recital? So my concert pictures, maybe even like a backstage at the recital or the concert, maybe it's their open day, you know, so they have a big open day or an open house where they bring all their teachers in and all people from the local community. Maybe it's our trivia night or our gala dinner that we run. Maybe mm-hmm. it's our merchandise or our uniforms that we've got boards. Exactly. Like what, what kind of boards do we want to create on Pinterest? And can we talk a little bit about the tactics around, you know, how do we tag them and, and, and that type of thing? Because we are a local, generally a local bricks and mortar business. So uh-huh. what can we be doing to ensure that, you know, because it's a bit hard going out to the whole world with our stuff because if I've got a dance studio in Sydney and then uh-huh. there's obviously someone in New York, it's like loving my stuff, which is great, but uh-huh. they're not going to be an ideal customer for me. So is the, how can we kind of set up our Pinterest account and our boards to help a bit with that? Well, you know, that, that's, a, that's a good question. You know, I think the first thing you want to do is really take a step back uh, before you start pinning like crazy. Um, what, what I often notice, um, for what a lot of business do, is that they're so quick to like pin a bunch of images, but they don't realize that, you know, Pinterest is a search engine. And so if you haven't even figured out your keywords yet, don't even get on Pinterest. Okay. Because because, you know, people are, because when you, when you go on Pinterest, there's a search engine there and you're typing in keywords about the things that you want to discover. Okay. So when you're creating your, your Pinterest account, you, you really have to figure out ahead of time, the keywords, because those are the keywords that you need to garnish in certain areas of your account 
And it's because you want to rank high on Pinterest search engine when people are looking for your specific products and services. So there's a lot of planning that goes behind that. And because it it is all images, you want to make sure you have the right kind of images. Um, You know, for example, user generated content, you know, where people kind of do a lot of selfies, you know, they they show a product and here I am, (laughs) you know, I'm. I'm using this and, you know, I lost 10 pounds doing this or whatever. Um, You know, that might work okay on Instagram, but on Pinterest, you need to be a little bit careful. Um, High quality images are really, really important. You know, you talked a lot about, you know, say behind the scenes sort of stuff. You know, people love that, but you want to make sure that you capture that um, in a very professional Mm -hmm. sort of setting. Like, you know, you don't want to have like blurred images um, just, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I think you can totally. get away. Yeah. You can maybe, maybe get away doing that, you know, on other platforms, but yeah. on Pinterest, it's really about quality. Um, because at the end of the day, those images are actually links. You want to link them all back to your website. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you have to, you know, so you, you have to figure out also ahead of time, you know, what, what type of images am I going to, you know, curate? Um, I know one of the, one of the, I think, questions that you asked me was about, you know, print advertising. So when you're doing print advertising, I'm going to assume that you have a photographer, right? Yeah. yeah. So you can, you can plan ahead of time, you know, what, if you know the type of images that work well on Pinterest, you know, plan those things ahead of time so that, it, so that it'll save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Um, instead of saying, oh gosh, you know, too bad we didn't, you know, take, you know, this type of image or this type of setting, um, when we had our photographer for that print ad, you know, you could kill a lot of, you know, you know, kill two versus one stone, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think what I'm hearing here is, you know, really don't just kind of rush in and start posting stuff and creating stuff. Actually, uh, which I think is great, take a step back and go, you know, why am I on this platform? What do I want to achieve? What do I need to do to be successful on this platform? Have you got um, some tips for our listeners around how to really set those goals and and what kind of objectives, uh, you know, do you say to your clients that they should be setting around, you know, Pinterest and what they can expect in terms of, you know, traffic? So we can have a conversation around, you know, those value kind of um, images versus come and buy something. Okay. Like come to a free trial class to give you an example. So a dance studio would probably want to promote a free trial class or a one week unlimited class pass to come to their studio. So can you talk a little bit about how you would kind of put that into a strategy? Yeah. So no, that's, that's a great example. You know, everybody likes freebies, right? Women are obsessed with freebies and discounts. So, um, so basically what you want to do is, on your website, because it all starts with your website, because the, the ultimate goal of Pinterest is to use Pinterest to drive more traffic back to your website. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't have traffic at the end of the day, that means you're missing opportunities. You're missing sales, lost sales. And we can't afford to do that, right, Clint? Yeah, exactly. No, okay. no, no one can. There's so many dance studios out there these days that we, we can't afford to, you know, have them jump over to someone else. Exactly. So I'm going to assume that your offer, whether it's a free trial, whether what, whatever that is, it could be an, even an ebook about uh, anything to do with, you know, helping moms choose the right type of dance studio for their daughter or their son or whatever that is. There's so many things that you can do. But the mm-hmm. bottom line is, is that you want to have basically like a landing page on your website with an image that you can pin onto Pinterest. And that way, when people see that image on Pinterest and they click on that image, it goes right back to their website. Yeah. And there you go. Now you have an opportunity to get a sign up. Um, And so eBooks, anything for free like that works really, really well on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure that your images are at least 735 width and 1102 length in pixel size. Mm, anything smaller is not going to get anybody's attention on Pinterest. And I say that again, because I reckon people are writing their notes and they're like, what were those numbers again? 
Yeah. So you want to make sure that when you're working with your photographer, your graphic artist, with the intent to share it on Pinterest, you want to make sure that those visuals on your website or your landing page is 735 width by 1102 length in pixels. Mm-hmm. Pixels Perfect. is like, you know, yeah, yeah, that's what everyone, everyone kind of uses that. Facebook uses it, Instagram yeah. uses pixels. So I, I'm sure our, uh, I'm sure our listeners will be able to um, do that. And they can jump on, um, you know, Canva or any of those cool tools now right. to, to help them create, create, right. some, um, create some artwork. Uh, and I, I want to touch on the fact that, you know, and I did before, that our studio owners are saying, Clint, you know, our members, so many people like, Clint, there are so many dance studios opening all the time in our area. How do we stand out? And it's a conversation we've been having a lot on the summit already is getting people's perspective of how to really stand out from the studio up the road or down the road. What's Because I know you work with brands as well. So, you know, building a brand and a standout brand. So I'd love your perspective on that. Okay. Well, you know, you're, I'm, I'm hoping at this point that um, the dance studio owners, um, in terms of their website, that is set up properly. You know, I, I mean, I, I look at how you're branded properly. Do you have the right logo? Are you consistent with your fonts? Or are you just kind of all over the place? You know, you want to have that consistency. So when you're on Pinterest and you're sharing your image, for example, you know, you want to add, say, your logo on on your image. But, you know, don't make it so large that that's all you can see is your logo. You know, you want it to be tasteful, right? So, you know, branding is really important because, yeah, you're competing with a lot of other people um, on Pinterest and you want to make sure that you're doing, um, you know, the right type of um, artwork that's really going to make you stand out. But here's the thing. I actually did some research on Pinterest, okay, on dance studios. So I typed in dance studios um, under the, um, the search engine on Pinterest. And, and say of the top 10 that showed up first in ranking, I noticed that they probably one out of 10 of those, one of them only had 1,200 followers. Guess what? There is room for these stand, st- dance studio owners right now mm-hmm. to, to really get on Pinterest and do it right because 1,200 followers is not a lot. For yeah. the top 10 that are ranking high, that's all they have. So this is really exciting for dance studio owners, you know? Um, so there's a lot really that you need to do to you know to reap the financial benefits of, of Pinterest and and obviously outdo your competition. Um, so one of the things I tell people is you know don't make the mistake of trying to reinvent the wheel when you know someone has already done all the work for you. You know avoid you know the, the avoid the trial and error and, and just wasting time. Um, so you know, choose to work with someone who is an expert, someone who has been able to prove that they themselves have been able to rank high on Pinterest and on Google. And see, that's the beautiful thing about Pinterest, Clint, mm-hmm. compared to other social networks. Pinterest can help you rank high on Google. Wow! Tell us how. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, I have a feeling that that's probably how you found me. You might have used Google and typed in Pinterest expert or Pinterest consultant. Mm. And you know what? When you do that, those people that are listening in, you know, type that right now. And you're going to see my Pinterest board on the first page of Google. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. And our studio owners want that. You know, because the question we get all the time is, you know, how can we be on, you know, the million dollar question, how can we be on the first page of a Google but not pay an SEO company to put us on there? Exactly. And you know what, Clint, I have never invested on like paper clicks on for Google or anything like that, or I've never spent a a single penny on ads uh, for Google because I really wanted to prove how powerful Pinterest is. Mm. So Pinterest can help you rank high on Google because people use Google as their number one search engine. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's like you're really accomplishing so much with Pinterest and in terms of helping you get found. So if you're using Pinterest cor- correctly, like I have, because I, you know, I'm, I, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I just want to tell you that that's just really how, how Pinterest works. It's just amazing. Mm. 
That's great. That's a that's a great benefit. And I love how you have checked the dance studios and they've what you said like twelve hundred followers or something. Guys, there is so much opportunity. That's not a lot, as Anna just said. That's not a lot because Anna, what like there's Pinterest accounts with like millions of of followers. So there's lots of opportunity there for our studio owners to to get on and 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 uh, you know just get in there really and and start working it and and trial and error. I mean, do you think a lot of social media and it is about trial and error because you know we know even with lots of our studio owners are doing Facebook ads and we know with that they're like, what's the magic formula? The magic formula is you know you need to keep you know doing things and testing it and testing different copy. I mean, is it the same over on Pinterest? You know, do we need to be really um, watching our stats and what gets more, you know, repins. And can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, you know, for those that don't, um, you know, that are that are new on Pinterest, you know, P- you can actually, just like Facebook, you can buy ads. And so you can, um, you know, you, you have to choose which image you want to use. Like say, say for example, the giveaway that you were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah free so, trial class. Let's say yeah. it's a free trial class for a preschool ballet. So like a, a three to five-year-old baller, little baller, little Susie, we'll call her, because yeah. I always use little Susie. Okay, little Susie. So little little Susie. So we have little Susie's ad, right? So um, now, mind you, there's there's Pinterest has a lot of rules about what you can't and can't do. Okay, but yeah. you know that that's like a whole day seminar just talking about what you can't <laughs> and can't do, to, really. So, but but to keep it simple, it, actually, to to do the promoted pins, that's what you call them, promoted pins, um, and their ads, and you only pay for clicks, meaning. Um, if someone clicked on your image that got you to that website, cause it's based on clicks, you, you, you can control the amount of money that you want to spend when someone clicks on your ad. Mm-hmm. And it's just mm-hmm. such a simple process. I mean, you, you can do the ads like in five minutes. Yeah. Easy. It's, it's well, such an easy format. And I find it a lot seriously easier than, than Facebook. Yeah. Fa- look, Facebook ads, when we're looking at power editor and um, pick, you know, the conversion pixels and setting that up, you know, it is challenging uh, for a lot of our studio owners who aren't, um, who aren't used to that platform. You know, it does take, it took us a little while to get used to it as well. Um, right. so with, with Pinterest though, with the promoted pins, Anna, what are we looking at in terms of how do they, how do they charge us? So it's per click, but what are they basing that on? Is it similar? Like, is it a bidding system? Like who is mm. after and can we go after an audience or are we going after keywords? How does, how do we, how does that kind of work? Okay. So you, you, so there's three things that you just mentioned. We talked about keywords. Yes, absolutely. You need to um, choose your keywords. Um, and again, you know, as a dance studio owner, I'm sure that um, that should come pretty easy for them uh, because they've been running their business. They they know exactly what kind of keywords to use to grab that audience, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you have to know your keywords. But Pinterest also promo- um, um, gives you some recommendations of, of some possible keywords. Um, you know, so instead of just, you know, instead of just saying standard keywords like, you know, um, dance classes, they, they might suggest... Um, other things like, you know, back to school uh, as an example for a keyword okay. yep. because yep. on Pinterest, you know, Pinterest users are trend seekers. So you want to leverage what's currently trending, right? You know, what's on top of mind of people right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we just had back to school here in, in, in U S and Canada. Um, and, and then, you know, Halloween is huge. You know, if you have some sort of a Halloween event um, that you want to promote, so you're going to use those keywords. And then, yes, in terms of the the ads for the clicks, yes, you know, if other businesses are using the same keywords as you, yes, you're definitely, um, you know, competing for those keywords. So sometimes you might have to pay a little bit more than just say five cents a click because that's the lowest that you can um, okay. Start is five cents, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not a penny. <laughs> five, five cents. Five, five cents. cents. And do you put that? Do you put in that per click amount that you're willing to go up to? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Right. And then what was that? What was the third part? I only uh, got two out of three. 
I forget. <laughs> I forget. I forget what I said then. I was just all into how much is it going to cost us. Um, oh, you know what? And again, it's just testing. You know, you just um, spend say a hundred dollars a month, or better yet, try ten dollars a week if you you know. But just try it. Yeah. Because and, I, and and I think and I sorry to interrupt, but I think the most important thing is try it. And look at the statistics and yes. then make sure when you get the, you know, if you've got an email form, you know, you can have the opt-in form, that's fine. But if you've got a contact form, make sure you're asking where people are hearing from. If it's a landing page and you just want them to put in a couple of details so you can try and get them into your funnel, that's great. But if you then call them to get them in for a class, you know, my favorite question is where are the last three places you heard about us? Because we know it's not just one place anymore. Mm-hmm. It's kind of three, and you want them to say Pinterest. So you can say, oh, okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. So, guys, just make sure you are tracking a broad kind of marketing lesson, track where everyone is coming from so you know where your dollars where your dollars are being spent well and you're not kind of just throwing money on the street. Exactly. And, you know, Pinterest has really great analytics for businesses. So once you have your uh, Pinterest account verified, you do have access to your analytics. So it's, it's showing what kind of content pe- people are out already pinning from your website. Isn't that cool? Mm, that's great. That's a good yeah. one. Um, even if you don't have that set up yet, and if you don't have a Pinterest account, you can actually just type in uh, www.pinterest.com forward slash source forward slash and then your com- complete website url.com and just mm-hmm. type that in and you can see which pinners are pinning content from your website already wow that's a great yeah. tool i love really that cool. yeah and and of course you always want to check your google analytics right mm-hmm. it'll mm-hmm. show where you're getting your traffic from yeah, yeah, great, great tip, guys. Check out that link so you can start seeing. Hopefully, the website set up uh, the correct way so you are getting people pinning. Um, and you work with you know business owners all the time. I'd love to know what are some of the common questions that they're coming to you with. What are you helping with them with? Where are they like? I just don't understand this, or I'm stuck with this, or what are those common questions? Because I'm sure they're things that our dance studio owners are, are going to be facing as well if they venture onto this platform or they are starting to venture onto it? Okay. Well, you know, so many people ask me different things for all sorts of different reasons. You know, there's every business is unique. Every business has its own unique challenges. Um, You know, you name it, but it's everything from, you know, making their websites Pinterest friendly. You're going, huh? Pinterest friendly? (laughs) What's that? Uh, You know, from figure out what type of images they should create um, mm. content creation ideas for blogging. Blogging is really important, you mm. know? Um, graphic artist jobs, image creation, how to get more followers, how to repurpose their content so that they're not just sharing it, say, on Pinterest, but all on other social platforms, right? Mm. Um that's coaching cool. and problem solving, um, how to get more traffic back to websites. I mean, it's just goes on, on and on. Yeah. I mean, of, mm-hmm. I guess in terms of the content, you know, and everyone has a different opinion on repurposing content. And I love to hear kind of everyone's thoughts on it. What are your thoughts on, you know, say you've got an image that's created for uh, Pinterest. I know it's a different size on Facebook and Instagram, but they are different platforms and people are on these platforms for different reasons. You know, mm. I don't go to Facebook, you know, on, when I'm on Pinterest, I'm looking for quotes and, and, and amazing things like that, inspirational things. And on Facebook, you know, it's to talk to our community predominantly. Mm. Uh-huh. And so how can we kind of repurpose if we're creating images for Pinterest, how then would you say to repurpose that maybe across, you know, Facebook or Instagram or, and then on our website, is it, that image attached to a blog and so then on Pinterest we link uh, you know we have that link to the blog there how do you if you can give us like a quick kind of rundown of what that looks like okay so you're talking about okay you have an image and and now how do you sort of recycle it so that it'll work well on all other social media platforms yeah yeah. okay well you know what's really cool is that I'm sure a lot of of your uh, audience um, have used Canva right 
Yeah. C-A-N-V-A dot com Canva. Yeah. Mentioned it before. Like they're, they're totally, our community of studio owners are obsessed with Canva at the moment. They got me obsessed with Canva. <laughs> oh, and you know what? Their head office is in Australia. Is their head office in Australia? Yes. 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 So, you know, good for you Aussies. Yes. But anyway, Canva has come out with a tool where um, you, you can create an, an image. Let, let's just say, you know, they have a template for Pinterest, um, for Pinterest, and it's already a, a set template. That exact same measurement, they use that exact same measurement on Canva. And guess what? This is a free tool, okay? So you, you got to listen in because this is free stuff. So um, you create, say, your image onto Pinterest. Now they have a tool where it will automatic, automatically resize to the different social networks. So it will size it for you. Wow. That's good. Yes. So there you go. But that, I mean, that is just like that to me is that is just incredible. They just came out with that about two weeks ago. And wow. this is specifically yeah. for, you know, businesses who really, because it's time consuming to start from scratch and okay, let's just do one size for Twitter, one size for Facebook. Now yeah. with this, with this, with this tool, you just create the one image and then it has these options on the top, like, okay, do you want us to re- resize it into Facebook size, Twitter size, LinkedIn size, whatever that's on Instagram, you just check it off and then it, and then it, it'll just show it. it. And then all you do is just click download and, and you're done. It's, it's so awesome. And it's better than, you know, I love seeing those. Well, I don't love it, but it's kind of funny when you see those images that they've obviously like just like resized them and it's like someone's head's like this, <laughs> like squashed. Um, it's called Photoshopping. <laughs> <laughs> it's, called, it's called like me using Photoshop, you know, yeah, like yeah. someone who has Photoshop that doesn't know how to use Photoshop. Right. Um, thanks for sharing Canva with us because it is such an awesome tool. I hope you enjoyed one of our favorite moments from Dance Teachers Unite. If you'd like lifetime access to over 30 hours of these video masterclasses, make sure to check out www.dancestudioownersassociation.com.